Good morning, YouTube. Today, I'm gonna to review a 1998 Ferrari 355 F1 GTS. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan. This is my garage, and we talk all about the supercar ownership experience, what it's like to own them, to maintain them, and even to drive them. So today, we're gonna take this beautiful 355 out, show you all about it, talk about the history of the car, and of course, this is Jeff's car. You've seen Jeff multiple times. He's been in very, very many of my videos. Oh, 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 oh,
just ridiculously gorgeous. There is so much carbon fiber in the engine bay, gives the whole rear of this car just a, a modern sexy look that it should have had. We've also got some aftermarket carbon fiber bits all over the interior. That center console piece is aftermarket carbon fiber that is not from the factory. Same with the handle, same with these kick plates. He's got some of these aftermarket kick plates down here which look really, really good. Also has an aftermarket Brembo brake kit. Supposedly this is the same brakes that are actually on the F40s. Those things just barely, barely fit in there. It is one of the tightest squeezes I've ever seen. So besides the GTS, the Berlinetta, and the Spider, they actually did offer a challenge car version of this. Believe it or not, it was not sent from the factory as a challenge car. So if you want a challenge car, basically, Ferrari sent a regular Berlinetta and a kit and the dealership installed all the parts to make it a challenge car, which is kind of hilarious. So effectively that means you could convert any of these cars into a challenge car with very little effort. They also had the Fiorano edition, which is a very, very low production car. So you don't see those pretty much ever and they're worth a crap load. So if you do see one, uh, take pictures and send me videos. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the big elephant in the room, which is the maintenance thing. So everyone gets scared of the 355, like, oh my god, it needs all this maintenance. Well, it's not really true. Let's talk about the first big thing, which is the, quote, major service. Basically, that means this engine still has timing belts. And because of that, the engine needs to come out of this car about once every five years. Some people push it more than that. Some people do it less than that. Five years is about typical. So in order to do this big service, it costs anywhere from starting around 5,000 bucks all the way up to sometimes even in the $20,000 range. It completely depends on what's actually wrong with the car. So of course the thing is, once the engine's out, anything that's possibly suspicious or could go bad, it's worthy to replace it or take care of it at that time. Even though everyone gets so scared of the major and oh my God, you gotta pull the engine out, it's actually designed for that from the start. They know that this engine needs to come out, so they design it very intuitively to drop the engine out. It's not that hard. Arguably, is it really that big of a deal? I don't know. I don't think it's that big of a problem and you can predict predictably compute the cost of it ahead of time. So it's not like it sneaks up on you and suddenly the car is left stranded on the side of the road. Of course, there was the recall in 2008 for the fuel line leakage. So I'm sure you've all seen the famous footage of Hoovy's 355 catching on fire when Parker was driving it. He had not taken care of the fuel recall. Yes, it was actually recalled and he could have taken care of it for free, but he didn't. And uh, basically those fuel lines up, up there in the front of the engine would rub, damage somehow, start leaking fuel. And if you notice that is directly by the exhaust. So as soon as it starts leaking fuel, it's going down onto exhaust manifolds. Well, kiss your car goodbye. Another problem is the cracked manifolds. This seems to be an ongoing thing that Ferrari's had lots of problems with. It's not super common. It does happen. Basically the manifolds used far too too thin of metal. Excess heat plus vibration just causes them to break. It's basically the same concept as what happens in the F430. Easy solution, you just replace it with some aftermarket headers and then you never have to worry about it again. Given that you're gonna be pulling the motor out every five years anyway, swap out aftermarket headers at that time so it's not even that difficult. Catalytic converters in these cars was the older technology of catalytic converters. They don't last very long, so whatever, just pull them out, kill the planet. Whatever. Earlier models of the car had issues with the valve guides. They initially ran brass valve guides. Those can wear out. And then of course, you're gonna get a bunch of oil leakage into the cylinders. You're gonna lose some compression and eventually it's gonna cause possible issues down the road. If you have one of the earlier cars that has the brass valve guides, you probably should get those changed out. Later versions of the car ran steel valve guides and then it was no longer a problem. I believe they say that the 97s and later or 98s and later have the steel ones. So it's a little bit tricky you'd probably have to look up VIN numbers because it's not exactly sure when they switched over. And then finally, this thing has catalytic converter ECUs, which are known to be really unreliable. So here's the thing. You've got these problems that happen in the car and a lot of it is simply because of its age and it's also because of just different technology in the way they designed cars back in the 90s. It's all predictable stuff. So everyone that freaks out about these cars, I don't think they really think about how all these problems are extremely well documented. So because these cars have been around long enough, all the problems have known solutions and it's not that hard to take care of. And all you have to do is factor that into your budget. So if you own one of these cars, compute in what you think is gonna go wrong with it, what sort of maintenance it's gonna need, amortize that out over a couple years, and suddenly it becomes not that expensive to own one of these cars. So why everyone freaks out about that, I don't know. Personally, I would not care. I still want one of these things. I've had the car for six and a half years 
And on actual maintenance, I think I've spent about 22 or 23 grand. It's one major, one clutch, oh. uh, had, both radiators have had to be replaced. Those are like a grand each. The major, like you said, it's the base for the major was seven, but then we found a few other things in there. It came out to about a, 10 and a half, 11. Clutch was like six, plus some other things that we did. Total I've put maybe closer to like 27, 28, but that's because like I redid like the leather on the seats. Which being, is a function of age. Yeah, being a GTS, it, it had a lot of damage on the leather. So if you take that four grand for the leather out, then it brings it back down to where it's like maybe 23. Three grand a year, you figure that's roughly, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of what I was expecting. This is the car that I've always wanted. And like, how, many, how many miles? Uh, it's I got it with 43, it now has 68. Nice. I am not bullshitting with and this is, car. Is that, it's only on its second clutch? Uh, yeah, that was the second clutch. So that, yeah. again, everyone that freaks out with these F1 cars killing the clutch, mm -hmm. it's totally crap. Oh yeah, I was gonna give my little rant about like the F1 transmission. Sure, go for it. Uh, so, that, so one thing I wanna be really clear about, and you'll see it when we drive the car, Every time somebody finds out that it's an F1, they're always like, oh, an automatic, that sucks. We need to be very clear that this is not an automatic like you have in, you know, your you know, your friend's high-end Lexus or whatever. Those are those are just automatics. This is, like Dan said, the exact same transmission. Instead of using shift rods, you they just have like hydraulic actuators. Right. So you can sit there with the car without it, like you just turn the accessory on so it's got power. You can shift through all the gears, choo -choo -choo -choo, up all the way down, whatever. You have full control over that. If you are at a stoplight and you're in first gear, you take your foot off the brake, unlike an automatic, the car won't creep. At least I know some of the newer ones do. This one doesn't, right? Because it is computer controlled, like on the clutch. The clutch is disengaged. It's got it disengaged. Yeah. So don't think just because you've driven like a BMW with paddle shifters, that's just an automatic. This is not an automatic. It's a hydraulic manual, and yes. it, it's you control it. Except for the fact that you have to go sequentially, you control it just like you do gated. It's the first car with paddles on the street. Gotta have it. Yeah. And yeah. and I don't regret it at all. It's amazing. I love it. And every time I run up against like a 355 manual, they get smoked because they can't shift as fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even even the first version, like this is the first street version of the F1, and it's still faster than a human can shift it. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets so caught up on that whole thing of it. Oh, it removes the soul of the car or whatever. Drive one. Yeah. Drive one and you will see. And trust me, I've ridden this car. When you're hard on the gas and this thing's shifting, Oh, it's brutal. If you've driven one and you don't like it, okay, cool. I get it, it's not your cup of tea. But if you haven't, don't compare it to other like paddle automatics. It's, it's, it's not, not the what same. it is, it's not the same, not at all. Speaking of all that, I think we should get out and take it for a drive. So I forgot to mention, this has an aftermarket Capristo exhaust and it has cat deletes, so it sounds epic. If you have a 355, this is the required exhaust for this car. It just makes it sound so perfectly Ferrari. It's ridiculous. We're going to start it off and you're going to hear what I'm talking about. It's just, oh, it's absolute mm, perfection in the 355. Ooh, we got the old school. Oh, look at little tiny Cavallino. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to wait for the pump. As oh. long as, yeah, in fact, it should be flashing over there. As soon as it stops flashing, then it's telling you ready to go. Okay, now you can neutral. And then, yeah, just foot on the brake, turn. and now you can turn it. It should start, yeah. There you go. Oh, 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 oh. Wow, I don't know that I've ever put on this. I'll say, have you ever, over ever ridden in your own car? I, I don't. Uh, yeah, yes, I have. So it actually feels very similar to my 430, the way it's handling the, the clutch and everything. Okay, good. It's. It's got that same kind of like you start to give it gas and it's riding the clutch a little bit. Yep, and then you can feel it engage the clutch fully once it starts going just a little bit. So you can totally hear that the cam has just a little bit of lope to it. <laughs> it's so cool. Putting along real nicely. And the shifts are very quick and smooth. Like you don't get any lurch. It doesn't, like it's not violent, you know? It's, it's nice, it's pleasant. This is what you kind of want when you're just you know, I don't know, like got a date and you're not trying to be an asshole in traffic or something. And we're in sport mode. And we're in sport the, mode, The yeah. shifts are a little quicker in sport mode and it stiffens up the suspension. Okay, and it does automatically go down to one? Yeah. When you come to a stop? In normal mode, if you hit the red line, it'll upshift for you. Oh, really? In sport mode, it'll bounce it off the rev and will, it just not, waits. It will not shift, yeah. Now, you put it in neutral at stops, right? I always do, yeah. It's just, yeah. Just have it? It's just have it, yeah. I always, right. yeah. So I, I've read up on that whole, should you put F1 cars in a neutral at 
stoplight. There's there's different so sides of the argument. Here's my reason why. Yeah. is because when I first got my S4, I would stand on the clutch the entire time and leave it in first because I wanted to be able to get the jump off the light. Yeah. And then my mechanic was like, you know, you really shouldn't do that. Like, you're you're wearing out your throw-out bearing by holding it like that. Uh, so much like I don't stand, because I figure if I'm in neutral, okay, he's it just It re Yeah. It re-gages the clutch. So my thought is if I have it in first, it's sitting there holding its own throw-out like the entire time. That makes sense. And so I'm like, okay, I won't do that. Like, I'll put it in neutral so that everything is in a relaxed mode. I can see that. All right. Are we warm enough? Yeah, uh, well, we got traffic in front of us anyway. <laughs> and that was light on the gas. <laughs> oh my God. There's that moment where it just all of a sudden really opens up. Mean to f ferocious. <laughs> it's just like... Oh. This is a bad car to own because you're going to be on the gas hard all the time. Just to hear that. You just want to hear that scream. Oh my god. There's no blip. Yep. on the throttle when you do the downshifts like in the 430 i think the 360 does it too so it just kind of shifts you know like if you're in a manual transmission you put in a lower gear and you don't blip the if you don't rev match the engine you can feel it kind of lurch forward that's what it's doing so you don't get that like in the 430 it goes bra you know like <laughs> which is kind of cool i have to admit that's actually pretty epic <laughs> oh my god <laughs> to me really hard not to stay out of the gas like 100% on this car. <laughs> I'm not exactly a small guy and these seats are grabbing me. I'm like shaped like a barrel so I am wedged in like if I sit back I am wedged in the seat. I'm not going anywhere although my ass is too small. I have no ass <laughs> so my back is stuck in the car but my butt is kind of sliding around. The seats are really comfortable. It does have a bit of that older Ferrari thing where the, the pedals are shifted slightly to the right. It is not as bad as when I drove Tim's 348 because he's got the three pedal. The seating position is fine, but keep in mind, I'm only five foot nine. So I fit in these cars really well. I'm 6'2 and I'm and very fit, comfortable yeah. in it. Like very comfortable. We had to move the seat back a little. All right, here we go, ready? <laughs> as the newer fries I think they put a a pretty slow steering ratio on it you can feel I have to turn the wheel pretty far to get it to turn they probably have the same steering rack that's on the non power steering card or close to the same ratio so I'm having to turn the wheel really far to get it to go around these corners compared to a more modern Ferrari so it's interesting just to feel that the suspension is is I mean it's like older school suspension it's very tight you feel the road, you feel every bump, every creek. Come on, Callaway, we wanna go. Yes. <laughs> the acceleration in this is really interesting. It's very linear. The power comes on slowly and builds and builds and builds as it just keeps going and going. The more RPMs you give it, the more it's gonna pull. So you want this thing up in the way every RPM. So I'm sitting here at four and a half thousand RPMs and this is about where you're really starting to get the sweet spot. You really start to feel that torque kick in. So the maximum torque, remember, comes at 6,000 RPMs. So you're gonna wanna be around that area if you're trying to play and have fun. It's like right now I'm at 2,500. If I put it to the floor, you can see it takes a moment and then it gets, gets going, 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 and then, oh shit. <laughs> And once you get up near 7,000 RPMs, it's just wailing, just absolutely wailing. Oh my 
God. I love your car. Good. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> this is so much fun. Look, let's be real. You buy this car, you're not trying to beat people in a drag race. It's not going to win a race. A modern Toyota Camry could probably beat it. But Toyota Camry is not going to put this smile on your face. <laughs> Give me a break. Anyone who's sitting there and talking about my car is faster than yours, does your car do this? This is why you buy this car. You do it for the smile factor. It is, this is so much fun. And the best part is you're doing it while having fun and not totally obliterating the law. If you go play in a modern McLaren or a 488, to get that same effect, you're going three times the speed limit everywhere you go. This thing, I'm going, I mean, we're still going over the speed limit, but, but not that bad. And I'm having a ridiculous amount of fun. It's like that old saying, it's more fun to drive a slow car fast than a fast car slow. Well, this is driving a moderately fast car really fast. <laughs> and that's awesome. <laughs> It's also got this really cool whine. Like I've, I've heard it, you can actually hear that whine from the transmission. Yeah, the gear whine, yeah. Yeah, and, oh, it just sounds cool. It just sounds like an old school, badass car, you know? You don't get that nowadays. They want everything to be perfectly quiet. Back then, they're like, you. It's all about performance and fun. We don't care about your comfort and your, your hearing. <laughs> None of that. We want you to hear those gears. The steering's really kind of taking a moment to get used to. It just is a really slow ratio compared to well, that guy's having a good time. Yeah. Other people out doing what we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the thumbs up. Oh, God, that sound. Broke loose second. <laughs> that was awesome. Just to be able to unleash that sound upon the world. You're doing the world a favor every time you floor this car. Like everyone's just gonna be like, bravo! They're not gonna be mad. You could go blasting by people and they won't get mad. They'd be like, yes. <laughs> Whenever I bought the car, uh, I, I referred to driving it around as the Austin Beautification Project. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making Austin more beautiful by yes. look and sound by yes. driving this around. Uh, auditory <laughs> beautification. So I do have one minor complaint. The shift panels are tiny. Yeah, yeah they're short. I was, I was going to warn you about that. That you so, guys, the, I know that you guys are used to much longer paddles. Yes. Yeah. They definitely figured that out in later cars to have them much larger. And of course, with the, the lower steering ratio, you're I'm, turning it more. You're turning yeah. it even more. But being that they're on the column, not on the wheel, you know exactly where they yeah. are. So it's still not hard to find them, thank God. I actually have been looking and searching for, they make longer ones. Yeah. I, uh, I can't remember what they're called. And I want them out of carbon, but finding them is just impossible. This car makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I thought I was going to like it. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wake up the neighbors. <laughs> so we rolled the windows, we're in fourth gear on the highway, let's go to fifth gear, let's go to sixth gear. Very manageable, you can, you can yeah. have a conversation. You can yeah. have a conversation, yeah. so there's effectively like no droning in this car at all. It's, it's a higher pitched tone, so like the later models, the 430 and the 458 have a much deeper baritone sounding exhaust note. So they tend to drone a lot more, no matter what exhaust you got on them, they just, they drone. This has that smaller piston, high pitched scream out of a, a V8, you don't get any of that drone. We're at 2700 RPMs or so, in my car it would be humming like crazy. This thing, it's fine. Totally carry on a conversation, no problem at all. Perfect note right there. Oh, the state trooper right there. Is it? Yeah, right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Why are there cameras on the back of the car? The visibility is excellent. Oh, yeah, I was going to point that out. Like, yeah. I, wow. I, yeah. I've... So I'm changing lanes and you can see everything. Yep. The rear window actually is very, very large in this car, too. Forward visibility is perfect. Just like in most Ferraris, you, they're designed with that mid-engine to be able to see very well in the front. Do you want to uh, take it past your house and put some gas in it? Oh, okay. 
Okay. Yeah, we can take it down to because that Shell Street down 360. Sure, right. Then we got to yeah. And it gives you an excuse to drive it more on 360. I am. I. Oh no. <laughs> oh please no. Ah, you twisted my arm. <laughs> it's a little go kart that just screams at you. <laughs> Seriously. I'm actually really glad that I got to drive with the F1 because it's so hard to find them with the F1. The F1 in this is pretty much as good as when I drove Stu's 360. The 430, I would say they refined it a, yeah. pretty, a pretty good amount. I try not to take the diesel pumps, but I also try and take pumps that are... Uh, oh, I never even think about that. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm trying not try to, to be, be more courteous. Yeah, not trying to be that guy. All right, so then... Did it actually, can you look in the mirror, did it pop? Yep. Gets a little hung up sometimes. And then just parking brake and yeah, off? Just pull, yeah, pull the parking brake. Yeah, and then you just leave it in yep. gear, otherwise it'll scream. That's it. <laughs> Those shifts are violent as hell. God, like the whole car shudders. <laughs> Like your, your body lurches, the car, like, you can feel it in the chassis. <laughs> God, I'm surprised this thing doesn't go through mortar mounts a lot. Do those die on these cars? Yeah, oh yeah, they do, yeah. It's it's had them replaced. Okay. Uh, I yeah, it's multiple times, I'm sure. I think I've had them done once uh, since I've had the car. So it's Lord. Yeah. Is so violent. <laughs> I thought the 430 was violent. This is violent. It's great. <laughs> oh yeah, there's stereos. Eh. No one cares about the stereo in this car. Like literally, it is probably the least used feature of any car ever produced. Your gas pedal is actually firm. It's smooth, but it's firm. Oh okay, I guess. Yeah. Like it actually takes. A little bit of, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's heavy. It's not like a heavy brake, but it takes just a little bit of pressure to get it moving. Good to know. Yeah, like it just, it, I would assume it's probably because it's not totally fly by wire like the new oh, stuff. Oh yeah, it's not. No. Yeah. So it's actually got a it's physical cable. cable. Yeah, you can go back and see. Where, in fact, people sometimes have to like lubricate the cables in the bay. Yeah, like it takes a little bit of effort to move. It's kind of, it, it's just a little, little bit fascinating. <laughs> Jizz in my pants. <laughs> Whisper in my ear that you want some more, and I jizz in my pants. This really never happens, you can take my word. <laughs> I am in love. <laughs> Full disclosure, I had a lot of bias coming into this review. I love this car. This was like the Ferrari when I was growing up. I mean, Testarossa was when I was a kid, and as I kind of was more of an adult, that's when this came out. And I always just loved the styling of it. I'm particularly fond of the wedge shape. And I think it was like, the 348 looks good, but they perfected the wedge with the 355. But the sound, like, I, I don't know what it is. I am a very sound motivated creature. I know I'm a simpleton, but just hearing that sound, oh my God. God, it's a totally unique and fascinating experience driving this car. Like I said, you aren't gonna win races. Modern cars are gonna kick the shit out of you, but that doesn't matter. Like, it's so fun. If you're looking to buy this car, you buy it because of the experience that it affords you. It brings this entire persona about it. It's almost undescribable that there's so much intangible, awesome qualities about this car. I want one. I, it, there will be a 355 in my future at some point, mark my words. I can nearly guarantee it. It just is too good. It's too much fun of a car not to do that. I uh, went to a friend of mine when I was thinking of buying it, hoping he would talk me out of buying an exotic. He's had a bunch and so he knows all the headaches. And he was like, you should totally do it. And then he said something to me. <laughs> he said, you know, I, I was like, yeah, it works out to, you know, costs like, you know, three grand a year. And he's like, but think about that. Would you pay $3,000 a year for the experience of owning like a Ferrari, like your favorite Ferrari of all time? Three grand a year? Ah! Totally worth it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, 
I was, I was doing one of my phone consultations the other night and the thing I said is, look, when you buy a Ferrari, you're buying an experience. It's almost like buying the ability to take a mini vacation anytime you want. The McLaren we drove last weekend was so stupid fast and that provided a totally different, unique experience. That's what's so great about supercars and cars in general, frankly. Each car has its unique little personality differences. When you get to some of these older cars, there's so much personality and so much difference in personality based on the different models. The only thing I can tell you is if you have the opportunity to ever drive one of these, take it. You will be thinking about it. I'm, I'm going to be thinking about this for the rest of the week. It was so fun. On that note, obviously I absolutely hated this car. None of you should ever buy them because I want the values to go down so I can buy like three or four of them. But I, I, I want to devalue these cars. So do not buy a 355. They're total pieces of shit, okay? And they sound terrible. Don't do it. <laughs> All right, you guys. So as you know, we got Meg's going to do a review on this next. So you're going to want to stay tuned. That's going to be in a few days. So stay tuned for that. You guys seem to enjoy her videos. Tons of cool car stuff coming your way. We're going to be trying to review some cool cars. And of course, I actually get back my 458. So 458 videos are going to be coming back to the channel. Thank God I'm suffering. I've been going through withdrawals not having the car. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to be doing a lot of car stuff. It's going to be sweet.